Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Ogre. Ogre stands for, I believe, Object Oriented Graphics Rendering Engine. And what it is, is a rendering framework. It's damn near a game engine, just missing a couple of pieces like, um a game editor, a physics engine, and so on. It's more about the graphics and scene graph behind the scenes. But with all the plugins and tools available for it, it can basically be turned into a full-blown game engine. Now, the game you see running in the background right now, the footage there, that is taken from the Torchlight 2 trailer. And the reason I did that is because, well, Torchlight 2 is probably the highest profile game that has been created yet using Ogre. Uh, Ogre's been around since like 2005. It's an open source project, MIT licensed. And why the heck are we talking about it today? Well, that is because Ogre 1.12 was just released. So first off, a little bit of an overview about Ogre, and then we'll get into the release, uh, and then we'll cover a couple of other interesting topics on the subject. Uh, there's not a whole ton of a lot behind this release, to be honest, but they don't happen that often, so I decided to cover it today. So first off, you can see here, it is a simple, easy-to-use, object-oriented interface designed to minimize the effort required to render 3D scenes and to be independent of 3D implementation. In other words, it abstracts away the underlying layer, such as Direct3D or OpenGL. It's extensible, as we will see when you see all the plugins coming up. Uh, uh, common requirements like render state management, spatial calling, uh, dealing with transparency are done for you, automatically saving you time, clean, uncluttered design, and full documentation of all engine classes, proven, stable engine used in several commercial projects. Uh, it works on top of Direct3D 9 and 11, OpenGL, various different ES versions as well, and WebGL for running in the browser. It works on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and iOS, and is built for working with various compilers such as Visual C++, GCC, and Clang. Now, I'm not going to get into the rest of of the specific details about its shader support, the mesh loading support, animation support, scene support, and so on that are built into it. And as you'll notice, once again, not a full-blown game engine. There's nothing there about physics or audio. You still need to roll in those functionality yourself. But I'd say like 80% of what game's functionality is in there and provided by Ogre. Now a little bit on to the 1.12 release. Now this one, uh, the 1.12 release focuses on preparing the code base for future developments instead of new features. So you're not going to see a ton on this list. This is kind of a, a re-archetyping for the future. Uh, some obsolete parts were removed. Certain APIs were adapted to be more generic. Uh, the highlight features are uh, pound include directive support for GLSL shaders, PF depth support for shadows with RTSS and terrain component, uh, RTS3, um, RTS SS3 vastly improved internal API and refactoring shader library per pixel shading on Direct3D 11 GL3 GLES2 by default. Uh, the OpenGL3 Plus render system now used for rendering the reference test image. More precise timing for built-in profiler and support for external profilers via remotery. Uh, United API for fixed function pipeline and standard. Uh, Neon intrinsics for optimized math on ARM or Android devices. Um, stable material library that you can reference in your projects. Uh, Microsoft Visual C uh, SDK now includes the Python and Java components and support for 1.7 style terrains loaded via the terrain CFG format. Uh, it's an overview of all the bug fixes. Uh, one of the nice things is if you are working with this guy, uh, if you're currently deep in development using 1.11.5, do not want disruptions, good news for you. Relevant bug fix only commits were cherry picked from the master to 1.11 and accumulated in the 1.11.6 release. So if you are using an earlier version and you do not want to break your code, you can get just the bug fixes in uh, 1.11.6. Uh, so hopefully that will work out for you. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is an extensible um, framework. So you see here, there are a number of add-ons out there. Uh, so a lot of them are file format supporters. So here we've got Ogre Mesh files into Blender, uh, Blender Scene Exporters, export dot scene format from Blender. So if you are using Blender in your workflow, there is an importer and exporter for you. Uh, 3DS file support, which is kind of getting a little obsolete now. Cal 3D, uh, a bunch in mesh, in engine mesh viewer, uh, bunch a bunch of plugins basically here. There's the game oriented object goof, the framework for game or object oriented framework. Um, there's a, basic, a bullet right here. This is for um, the bullet physics engine. So like I said, even though it doesn't out of the box ship with a physics engine, the community has created bindings for some of the most popular ones. You also see one here for the ODE physics engine. There are also uh, language bindings such as ogre.net for using it with languages such as C sharp. Um, and on and on and on it goes. Now, if you're interested, Ogre itself is now hosted over on GitHub. Uh, it was before on Bitbucket, I think, which made it a bit tricky to work with. Uh, the code itself 
is, as I mentioned earlier, under the MIT open source license. If you know your open source licenses, MIT is basically one of the most liberal ones. You, you have as much control over how you work with it as you want. You basically just can't sue them. Um, there's a little bit more details here about what Ogre is all about. If you're interested in um, Ogre itself, though, you want to jump into the documentation. It is available at ogre3d.org. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the extent of it. Now, one of the really cool things about Ogre, and where you can know that it is fairly well archetyped, is there is a book out there called the Game Engine Architecture. This is actually a very good book, and I would definitely recommend you check it out if you're interested in the process of learning and creating uh, your own game engine. And if you go through this book, you will actually find that behind the scenes, almost all of the examples they gave were relative to um, the Ogre framework. So the author of this, who also worked on um, um, Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us and so on. So this guy knows what he's stuck. Jason Gregory, he actually chose the Ogre game engine. He's um, G, uh, the game engine architecture cites the Ogre rendering engine as a great example of how various engine systems can be designed and implemented. And quite often you will find um, references, direct references within this book to the Ogre um, game engine and our rendering engine and how things were done. So this is, even though it is an open source project that's been out there for a long time, it doesn't get a lot of exposure lately. Uh, industry pros writing a book about creating game engines actually cite Ogre 3D as one of the, the ways to do things and for plenty of the examples through the book are using Ogre. So that's definitely a um, vote of confidence, I suppose you could say. Um, so that's about it. Ogre 1.12 was just released. Uh, again, this is more of the engine for if you don't want to work with all the tooling, you want to build your own engine on top of a technology stack that's out there and you really like the C++ game engine, I'm sorry, C++ language, Ogre could be a very good fit for you. Like I say, it does about 80% of what a game engine does, but it doesn't implement that higher level stuff. So if you want to build your tooling and your um, game architecture on top of it, uh, you still have that flexibility here. So that's kind of where Ogre fits in the hardware stack. So it's not quite a game engine, but if you want to build your own game engine or you don't think your game it really requires a full-blown engine. Ogre could be a great choice for you. Uh, also, one thing to be aware of right now with this particular release, uh, currently Android is still missing and will be added to the download page shortly. So pre-compiled binaries for Android don't exist yet with this particular release. So if you are doing Android development, just do be aware of that. Hopefully, uh, by the time you've watched this video, that has been rectified, but it is something to be aware of right now. All right, so that is it. That is Ogre 3D 1.12 being released. At least what do you think of Ogre? Have you checked it out? Is it just kind of, is it a bit of a dinosaur too now? Like do, do the likes of, you know, Unity and Unreal and Godot and so on kind of make the, you look at this, you go, why would I use that? Or do you really kind of crave the, the lower level code focus of a tool like Ogre? Uh, if you're interested, actually go into their showcase. You can see a couple of the other games that were made using um, Ogre, the upcoming game Hob from the creator of Torchlight 1 and 2 was used by it. X Morph Defense was used by it. Uh, the other one that I've definitely heard of here, the reboot of Battlezone and Rebel Galaxies, at least on the PC, all used Ogre. So it has been used for a number of games. I know it's been used for a lot of like military simulations or commercial kiosks and that kind of stuff. Uh, there is definitely a, um, a strong community behind Ogre, but it doesn't get anywhere near the level of focus that you know the big three kind of game engines do or the like of Lombriard or CryEngine or so on. Uh, but I would actually argue that there's probably more games shipped using Ogre than um, Lumberyard by quite a fair margin as an example. All right, that is it for now. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.